All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the last video. As you see right now, I'm in my dad's old used RV. You know what I'm saying? His old RV. And I'm gonna do a part two to the problems with, with the black community. Um, what's another problem that we got, man? Another problem with the black community is a refusal to support another black person. You know what I'm saying? We refuse to support another black person because uh, a lot of us are jealous and a lot of us don't want to see another black man or, or a black woman succeed. So a lot of times we don't support our fellow black man or black woman because we get jealous of them. Like I told y'all before, I get jealous of people, but my jealousy doesn't turn to hatred. It's 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 more so like motivation for like, oh, okay, that person can do it. I can do it too. And what they have, I want it. But mind you, I don't hate. But a lot of times, you know, you know, a lot of black people will see another black man or a black woman succeed and they don't want to, you know, support them. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of times we're so quick to go and take our money to go and support other people outside of black people like the, the Asians with the nail salons and the Chinese stores and, and the weave stores, the Arabs with the gas stations and the convenience stores, or we'll take our money and go to and go to the white neighborhoods and buy from the white neighborhoods, but we don't buy from our own people. And you wonder and then people say, Oh, why is it that why is it that, you know, the uh, black community don't don't have nothing? Why is it that we don't have any sort of economic power well well the reason for that is is because we, we refuse to go support one another think about it i mean remind you think about it we let we let all the arabs come to the black communities listen back when i was staying in my old neighborhood in harvey bro all the gas stations I, I don't think i seen one gas station that was not ran by arab they they all run the gas stations all i ain't seen not one well matter of fact okay I had seen like one weave store, like one weave store that was ran by a black woman, I think. One, just one of them. All the other ones were ran by Asians. All of them were ran by Asians. All the nail salons. Every last nail salon I seen was ran by an Asian. And of course, Asians got, you know, got the Chinese restaurants as well. So it's like, but yet you see very few black businesses. If you go to Chinatown, do you see, do you see, you know what I'm saying, soul food restaurants and black barbershops and, 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 and black people stuff in, in their community? No, you don't. When you go to the Arabs community, do you see black stuff in their community? No, you don't. You know what I'm saying? Remind you, I have no problem with them doing business and I have no problem with them trying to make some money, but why is it that we support these people, but don't support our own people first? It's cold, it's, it's cold in here right now, man, I'm freezing, you know what I'm saying, it's like, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm you know, my uh, speech is kind of choppy, because I'm freezing, but, uh, I don't know why it's cold in here, but yeah, um, I'm somebody that personally buys anybody's product, regardless of race, you know what I'm saying? If it's a good product, you know what I'm saying? I'll I'll buy the white person's product, the Asian, the Arab person's product. If they have a good product, I'll buy it. But I tend to be more quickly to support my own people first versus them because those people already got their businesses and their economic power established already. We're the only people that don't have this economic power already. White people have their businesses. White, white people support other white people. Asians have their businesses. Asians support other Asians. Arabs have their own businesses. They support other Arabs. We're the only ones that don't do that. So that, that's why I'm, I'm more quickly to go support support another black woman or a black man's business. And real soon, I'm going to start donating money to my, to my black businesses. Because it's funny. Like, like, bro, when I used to stay in the hood, dog, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would see a black business up up one summer and then the next summer it's closed down. Like, like, like for example, there was like... Two restaurants that I seen. One of them was up. Let's say the uh, store was up in the summer of 2013, and then the next summer of 2014 is closed down. And then you know there's this one store, this one store, right? That was up one year. Next year is closed down. But yet all the Asians, all the Asians, Asian businesses and the Arabs businesses are still up. Why? Because we refuse to support one another. Or a lot of times, a lot of us that you know that, that have that slave mindset think think that white is better so some of us will go and support the white businesses because we think white is better when the black business is just as good or, or better than the white business but because we think white is better we go in and support their businesses instead and then y'all say oh you know then y'all say oh we can't get a job i can't find a job why ain't they hiring me well make your own business make your own business so you can employ people in the community 
Make your own businesses so you can hire people in the community. Because a lot of times at these jobs, if you got dreadlocks or, or if you dress black or you dress urban and wear Jordans and you wear like, you know, hoodies or whatever like that, they don't want to hire you because you got to be corporate. You got to be professional. You got to be, you got to, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know, bro, like you got to be white sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes they don't hire you because you're black. So, well, okay, well, if they ain't gonna hire you, make your own businesses. Like, it just baffles me. Like, there's this one little thing I read where in 20, like, back in 2015, black people as a total in America made $1.5 trillion. Think about if we took all that money and put that stuff back into our own community versus taking our money and go spending it somewhere else. Like, for example, what, uh, you know, Black Wall Street, back when that was popping off. You know what I'm saying? The black dollar stayed in the black community for a long time. I don't necessarily remember the exact... It's not me being on some black power stuff because, you know, I love everybody. But historically, everybody supports their own people before they go support other people. Everybody else around the world supports their own people first. Reminds you, yes, all of us are the human race. But culturally, people of certain cultures support their own people first before they go support everybody else. Meaning, okay... Let me go ahead, let me go ahead and take care of my people first. Then if there's room for me to help you, then I'll help you out. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Black people are, are the only people that want to go and and give money to everybody else except help our own community out. Why is it that, you know, the uh, ghetto look dirty? Why is it that I can't find a job? Blah, blah, blah. Well, if you would just take time and make your own business and support another black man or black woman's business, they can hire you to work for them. And your name doesn't got to be goddamn Dylan or Bob to get hired. You can get hired with your name being Shaquan or, or Tyrese or, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And you can work there acting yourself. You don't got to go in there. I mean, of course, you know what I'm saying? This is why, you know, I'm somebody that's not really a fan of corporate jobs. I don't want to be talking like, hello, sir, what's your name? Oh, Bob, okay, let me lead you to, to the management department. I, I, I don't want to talk like that. That's not how I talk. Now, of course, I understand. I understand being professional. I understand being professional. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, I'm not saying that you, you know, yeah, so that's a problem, man. You know what I'm saying? Us, our refusal to support another black woman or black man, bro. I'm just tired of this hood mentality being glorified. I'm just tired of, the, of this hood street nigga being glorified bro like you know i'm just tired of it man like it's like you know what happens 90 percent of the time when people do this this hood nigga shit dog they end up locked up or shot dead most people don't make it out that lifestyle most people that that do that lifestyle end up dead or in jail and the people who do make it out, they make it out by doing other means. They maybe start rapping, they play basketball, or they do something else legally that allows them to leave their life alone. And most drug dealers get locked up. You know, most drug dealers get locked up, but some drug dealers say, you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a sell these drugs, and then after I make a certain amount of money, I'm going to go ahead and stop selling drugs, and I'm going to maybe make my own business, and you know what I'm saying, and do that legally to where... I don't got to worry about the feds on my back 24-7. Rare cases that happens, because most of the time, most of them, be, you know, get locked up. But there there have been some drug dealers who did that. Like, you know what? You know what I'm saying? I'm, a, you know, I'm going to sell these drugs, you know, make some money. And then I'm going to take the drug money and, and do something legal with it. Average lifespan of a person is, is uh 75 years old. I don't know not one gang member or drug dealer who lasted to that age doing doing what they did forever. Most of them end up getting locked, getting shot before they even reach 21. Or most of them, if they do make it to 75, they're behind bars, you know. They're not free on the streets. They're behind bars if they do make it to 75. So, it's like, bro, this, this cycle has to stop, bro. Then with the women, you know what I'm saying, all that ratchet shit. I'm about to whoop a bitch ass. <laughs> all that ratchet ass shit, man. That ratchet ass bullshit, man. You know what I'm saying? All that loud ass ratchet ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Like what? Like, bro, there's a video video I had seen online, bro, where you know what I'm saying. It was this girl that died 
And there were these hood rats that was dancing by her grave. So I'm like, yeah, that's my bitch. She did R.I.P. to my bitch. Ah, R.I.P. to my bitch. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, girl, shut your loud mouth ass up. Shut your loud ass, like, bro, like that loud ass, ratchet ass shit. Shut your loud ass up. Shut your loud ass up, please. Please. That's my shorty. Yeah, that's my bitch. That's my hoe. Yeah. Like, like who who the hell pays their respects by, by talking like that? Like, come on now. You know what I'm saying? And, and and then with certain black kids that do have their parents in their life, you know, a lot of black kids don't have the proper family structure. But if a black kid does have a dad in, in his life, some of the dads be trying to teach their kids how to be a thug like them. There's some dads, bro, that that try to that try to teach their kids how to be a thug like them. There was the, these uh, two videos, bro. These videos that I seen online of these rappers, well, rappers that were like 10 years old, talking about killing niggas and, and fucking bitches, and they're like 12 years old. So sometimes the goddamn parents and the males in the community teach their kids how to be a thug. Like, why would you teach your kid how to be a thug? And then there's one video I seen of this goddamn mother giving her kid a gun and, and telling her son, hey, show the people your gun. And he was like, yeah, I, yeah, nigga, I'll blast your ass. A goddamn mom giving her kid a gun, telling the kid to show the camera your gun. That hood ass shit, dog. That hood ghetto ass shit, man. Then I seen the video online. Of these ratchet ass hood rats trying to show their little daughter or, or niece how to twerk. And the girl was six years old. So basically, they're raising this girl how to be a little hoe. Telling her how to twerk at six years old. Dancing to Cardi B. With the songs talking about sucking dick and fucking and riding on dick and shit. And she's six years old, six years old twerking to that shit. Trying to raise that little girl how to be a slut. So now you got people raising their kids how to be a goddamn gangster and raising the, and raising a girl how to be a slut. So it's like, bro, like I'm just tired of this hood mentality. Like I'm just sick of it, dog. Like like I'm just sick of this hood shit being glorified. This hood ass shit, ghetto ass shit that doesn't do nothing but cause the black women to have like six seven kids because they can't keep their legs closed and cause these goddamn dudes to be gangsters and shit. That kind of parenting, that's what happens. The kids gonna grow up, be a gang banger, and get locked up or shot, and the girls gonna grow up being a goddamn single mother, having like six, seven kids. I mean, come on, dog. Like, I was watching a goddamn, a goddamn interview with Kevin Gates where he said most of the dudes in the streets be snitching. Most of the guys in the streets, that's what he said. He said, he said, growing up, most of the guys that 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 was in his hood are snitches. So, so like, you know, those same niggas that be like, nigga, snitches get stitches. Those, those be the first niggas that's going to snitch. The first niggas. And my mindset when it comes to snitching is, okay, if you snitch and you are a innocent bystander, I feel like it's fine. Me, for example, if, if I seen a little four-year-old girl get shot and I know who did it, nigga, I'm snitching. Why would I allow this dude to go free? Why? You know what I'm saying? Why? Hey, man. No snitching. Hey, man. You a bitch because you snitch. Man, f fuck it. I'll be a bitch then because I'm not going to watch a dude kill a little girl and then I don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Tyshawn, you a bitch because you snitch. Okay, well, you know what? I'll be a bitch then. Fuck it. I'll be a bitch. So what? I don't give a fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, what else, dog? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, or some people don't snitch because they're afraid that if, if they do snitch, they're going to die. Fuck it. You know what? Like I said, if I were to see a goddamn gangster do a drive-by, right, and, and, and this dude kills a little girl, I'm going to snitch. I am not going to keep it a secret because what if he does it again and kills somebody else again and, and kills another innocent little girl? Then what? You know what I'm saying? It's probably best to, to uh, get him locked up right now before he does it again and kills another innocent child. So fuck all that no snitching shit. The only time, only time that I think that it's good not to snitch is when you are a person that's in the gang, right? You're in the gang, and let's say, let's say it's it's me and three other people, right? Let's say I always go rob a bank, and my three friends escaped, but I get caught, 
And as a result of me trying to save my own ass, I go ahead and snitch on them so I don't get life in prison. Or some shit like that because a lot of times a lot of these guys snitch because they're like, oh shit, you know, if I snitch, you know, I'll get 10 years in prison versus getting life in prison. So, you know, oh, so it was it was Tyrone, it was Quan Quan, it was Shay Quan. That's the only time that I agree with not snitching because, nigga, you was involved in the crime yourself. You can't snitch for, why are you trying to be goddamn, why are you trying to be, you know what I'm saying, righteous by, by snitching? When, when you was involved in it, don't, don't, don't take an oath, don't take an oath. Or, or don't take an oath to be a gang member, but but then you snitching on your own partners and shit like that. Cause a lot of these dudes be snitching. The, the same niggas that be like, nigga, I don't snitch, nigga. No, no snitch. Snitch get stitches. They be the first ones to snitch. That's the only time that I agree with not snitching. Cause like, nigga, you was involved in it. You was involved in it. So why are you snitching for it, bro? But like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. There was this one documentary I watched called Cocaine Cowboys. That documentary is so goddamn lit. That documentary is dope as hell. Where, like, it was, like, these big-ass drug dealers, right? They was making millions of dollars selling drugs. Not to say that selling drugs is cool, but the documentary, I ain't gonna lie, but, like, how they was doing it, how, how they was able to sell drugs and be able to dodge the police and dodge the feds was smart as hell. But you know what happened? They got caught, because you know why? Because one of the members got caught. And then he told the police their whole, all their plans, how they was able to sell drugs under the radar, all that stuff. He revealed the plans, you know what I'm saying? So like that nigga is a snitch. That nigga shouldn't have snitched. The only time I agree with not snitching is when you are involved in the crime yourself. Don't try to save your own ass, nigga. If you join a gang, if that's the lifestyle you chose, nigga, don't be snitching then, nigga. Learn to accept your consequences. Don't be snitching. That's the only time that I agree with not snitching. When you are involved in the crime yourself, not when you're an innocent bystander. But like I said, like I said before, because if I see a crime happening, it's a, you know, girl that gets shot. Nigga, I'm snitching. Fuck all that. Oh, I ain't gonna say nothing because no snitching. We have to get rid of the thugs and the hood rats in the community. We have to get rid of these violent motherfuckers in the community. If you watch DJ Academics, The War in Chirac, these niggas kill over nothing. They kill over nothing. Over shoes. Over a pair of Jordans that cost, where in America, you know, probably cost like $500, but in China, shit cost 30 bucks. Over shoes. They kill over what? Over a block because you are on a block and they shoot you. They'll kill you over a color. If you wear a goddamn color. Okay, let's say it's a blood or a crip. Let's say it's a blood. Nigga. Why do you got blue on in my hood, blood? Why you wearing blue, blood? Huh? Why are you in my hood wearing blue, blood? Or let's say it's a crip. Hey, nigga. Why you wearing that red in my hood, cuz? Huh? Cuz? Huh? Kill you over, over just wearing a goddamn color. When the colors, when these colors have been here before they were even born, these, the sky is blue. Blue has been here before you're even born. Why are you trying to claim a color? And if somebody wears a certain color, like a blue shirt, you want to kill them. Some people have ha have been killed over wearing a color that wasn't even gay banger. They decided just to wear a blue shirt just, just because blue is their favorite color. Not because they're a crip. It's just because blue is their favorite color. And, and they got killed over that. When the goddamn, like I said before, when these colors have been here before they were even born, the sky is blue. The ocean is blue. You're trying to kill somebody over a color when the color has been here before, before these gangs were even started. People... Was wearing blue before before Crips and the Blood became a thing, and vice versa. People was wearing red before red became a goddamn gang color or some shit like that. Before y'all wanted to goddamn claim the color as being Bloods and shit like that on some dumb shit, man. I'm telling you right now, bro. This is why the black community, dog, is messed up, man. Like I said, we have to get rid of the thugs that's killing people for no damn reason. We have to get rid of these goddamn hood rats that's doing shit too. These hood ass ratchet ass girls. You know what I'm saying? We have to get rid of them. We have to get these motherfuckers off the streets. And let's say, you know, if they change their life around, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, that'll be cool. Because, you know, there's been plenty of thugs who change their life around. Plenty of thugs who, who, who change their life around. And plenty of hood rats who change their life around. So, you know what I'm saying? If they change, well, that's good. But the ones that don't want to change, we have to get them either behind bars or goddamn take them out. Now... You know, I'm not somebody that, that really wants to, you know, that really calls for vengeance. You know, that's not my philosophy. But I do believe that these niggas need, need to be locked up. That's kind of hard for me to say because, you know, we all know that the government want, wants to lock black people up anyway. So, like, that's that's hard for me to say knowing that the government wants us to be in jail anyways. But when you're doing the crime, 
You got to do the time, man. It doesn't matter what race you are. If you're killing people, you need to get your ass locked up. I don't give a, I don't care who you are, dog, because this is ridiculous. But then with the black community, bro, listen, I've, I've seen videos of ex-gang members saying that they be finding crates of guns. They be finding crates of guns by the by the railroad tracks and crates of guns. You know what I'm saying? You know, by the railroad tracks, seeing crates by the railroad tracks. Then they open the crates and they find Uzis and Berettas and, and Smith and & Wessons and assault rifles and shotguns in these barrels, in these crates, which they say, oh, OK, basically the government is putting guns in the hood. They're putting guns in the hood. Why? Because they want us to kill each other and they want us to get locked up. So they say, oh, he has a gun that's illegal. Let's lock him up. It's a system to entrap us and look at us being dumbasses following their damn system. But also with the government, the government claims to be, oh, we're righteous and we're here to protect our citizens. But but, but look at them dropping guns in the black community. And, dro and, we all, and we all know crack came from the government dropping guns and crack in the black community wanting us to destroy ourselves and look at us being an idiot following suit with the plan some people blame this on white supremacy well it's the it's the white supremacists who did it they're the reason why the black community is like this listen the system was made by the white supremacists but it was us that was a dumbass and followed the system. We were the dumbasses that followed the system. We were the people that decided to, that, that decided to pick up that gun and start shooting. We were the people who decided to, to take that crack and start smoking it. So yes, yes, the guns and the drugs came from them, but we were the people who picked it up and wanted to start using it. So ultimately, it's our fault in a way. But yes, they did put that shit in the hood. But like I said, it's our fault for being a dumbass and our fault for, for picking the guns up and shooting it. And, and picking the, and picking the drugs up and using the drugs. That's like me, goddamn. Let's say if uh, you're a person that's trying to lose weight, and and I go buy a hamburger and put it on the table, and you eat it. Well, well, it's your fault because you bought the burger. Okay, yeah, I bought it, but 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 who still picked it up and who ate it? You did. So you know what I'm saying. You can't. Like I said, white supremacy does have a hand in making the system, but. Ultimately, it's our fault for, for wanting to fall trapped to it. It's our fault. Like I said before, they're not they're not innocent either because they're the ones that wanted to make it happen. But like I said, it's our fault ultimately because we were the persons who decided to want to get the guns, start shooting, get the drugs, start selling it, and, and start using it. So we can't fully blame them because we're the person who did it. Like I said before, that's like, I said before, that's like, you know what I'm saying? That's like you trying to be a person that is trying to stop drinking soda and then i buy soda and you drink it and you say oh it's your fault because you bought the soda okay yeah i bought it yeah you know yeah you know, that was tempting of me you know what i'm saying pretty much i i tempted you to, to drink it but ultimately who still drunk it you drunk it so you know like i said bro you know what i'm saying this is why the black community is in shambles dog don't get it twisted there's plenty of black people doing it doing what's good out here there's there's plenty of black women that are graduating from college there's plenty of successful thousands of black men and women getting successful thousands of black entrepreneurs thousands of, of black male entrepreneurs thousands of black female entrepreneurs so there are a lot of us making it in this world you know what i'm saying a lot of us you know what i'm saying but there's a lot of us that, that's doing bad and this is why once somebody makes some money they leave the black community they leave they leave because why would you want to live around that? Why would you want to live around that ignorance where it's a badge of honor to be a thug than go to college? It's a badge of honor to kill somebody versus getting a job. It's a badge of honor to sell drugs versus do something good with your life. <sighs> Man, dog. The last thing, last thing, you know, that last thing, last little talking point. Because, you know, okay, Tupac and Ice Cube wanted to keep it real. They said, you know what? Once I become successful, I'm going to stay in the community where I'm from. I'm not going to get money and leave my community. But eventually, eventually they had to leave. You know why? Because they was getting robbed constantly. Tupac's car was getting robbed. Their uh, houses was getting robbed. They said, damn, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm successful buying all this stuff, making this money. And, you know, and, and 
these people in my area is robbing me. So you know what? They had to move. Can I blame them? No, because people work hard for their stuff. People don't want you robbing their stuff. Like I said, see with me, you know, my uh, house got robbed like four times back when I was in Harvey. You know what I'm saying? I never witnessed any gang violence, nothing like that. That's all I want to say, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because this topic can go on and on and on. And there and there's many facets, many things to talk about, many little things. I, I can go on and on and on and on. But you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead you know, and uh, cut it right here because, you know what I'm saying, this, this topic is massive. I can go on and on and on and on, but I don't got time to keep doing that because this shit gets irritating. But, yeah, man, that's all I want to say, man. Black people got more power and more talent than they realize. You know what I'm saying? Black people has more talent and more power than they realize. You know what I'm saying? We have beautiful, smart women. We have great, great men that's intelligent. We can do better for ourselves as a community if we, if we just stick together. If we just learn to invest into our neighborhoods, if we just stop gang banging, and if we just get with God and, and make an effort to, to change our circumstances. That's all I want to say, man. I'm tired of talking about this stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, like, like I said this can go on and on and on and on and on. This is probably going to be the last video. I'm pretty sure that I missed some things, but like I said, this topic is massive. And there's there's so many things I can talk about, but you know what I'm saying? I'ma just end it right here. So like I said, it's your boy T Sizzle out of here, you know what I'm saying?